All right, welcome home racing fans. Pretty excited to talk about this. this is our new series for the showdown. We're going to include the larger scale 125th scale cars. And in this series, we're talking about 1959 to 1964 and what I just like to call the land barges. The big, long, lumbersome cars where the, where the trunk is sometimes bigger than, than the engine compartment. These big things are just a hoot to race. Um, just a very short window that they had there in NASCAR, but you know, you wouldn't think so. These cars are like the opposite of performing cars, but they made it happen, and that's what we're going to stick with. So, in the rules, you'll see the, the rules that are written there in the link, but um, so we're not talking about Mustangs, Camaros, the little short box cars. We're talking about these big barges. So, like I said, it's all in the rules there. As far as scale goes, 125th scale is what we're doing. There is a difference, although it's slight, but um, I think 125th scale looks better on the chassis. So anyway, that's the, the welcome here. I hope uh, you guys are excited about it. There's plenty of kits out there to choose from, so many varieties. I really look forward to seeing you guys uh, join in the fun. Now we're going to talk about some chassis and some parts and some other questions that I've had on the rules. As far as the bodies are concerned, you're going to leave them stock. That means you're not going to hog out the wheel wells here or anything, making a late night stocker. We're talking about box stock, so no, uh, no grinding those out. However, if you have to, you can sand on the inside to give you some clearance because this plastic is pretty thick, but nothing visually on the outside. Interior, as you can see with this one, Driver figure, little roll bar detail, and it's only on a flat card. You don't have to have a full interior. You can just make a flat tray, but you got to have a driver in there and add some detail in the roll bar. So it just makes it look like a stock car, like it should. Um, other than that, um, no other rules really. All I'm saying is just keep it stock like we have. You know, you can remove parts on the inside of the body. To make room for your chassis, whatever you have to do, but on the outside, just leave it stock. So one question that keeps coming up is, do you have to model after a one-to-one -one NASCAR, like the real deal, the prototype? And the answer is no. And this is a good example. This is a car that Brian and I worked on, just a figment of our imagination. But you do have a few guidelines to follow, and that is, make it look like it should be out there or could be out there. So... You know, we have a roof number, door numbers, you know, we have a sponsor, we have a horsepower rating there on the hood because a lot of them had them back in the day like that. And that's basically it. A few contingencies, you're good to go. So just make it look like, you know, that it could be out there. You have plenty of photos out there on the internet that you can find that'll tell you the kind of a style that you're looking for. As far as decals, we're pretty lucky in this scale. Uh, Slicks decals, they make some great number sheets, and this is a good quality decal. They're strong, but very opaque. You put these white numbers over a red car, and they're actually white, not like some of the cheap eBay, eBay decals I've had that just bleed through pink, and you have to double, triple stack them. Then you're not really saving any money, so the investment in better quality decals, and here's some contingencies that they make to go with it is uh, well worth it. There's also another brand I've been using a lot lately also and that's uh, Gopher Racing. They make a really good decal sheet too. You notice this one here. Hmm. I'll tell you what. There's a prototype right there. But again, the, the white, very opaque. Decals are strong. They're not easily broken. Um, they go on really good. Lay down nice. Just a couple brands to think about besides paddles. We've always used paddles before. At 132 a lot and uh, he makes some great quality decals he's just got a longer lead time so uh, these are just a couple of suggestions that are out there now you can still find other decals like yesterday's those were great decals um, you know just about anywhere but uh, right now slicks and gopher if you want to google those they might be a good option for you okay now it's time to talk about chassis running gear few little things that uh, we'd like to clear up so everybody knows, but they're all in the rules. 
Um, as you can see here, these are chassis that I built. And um, I can tell you that in the world of scratch building, <laughs> this is as simple as it gets. It's just a simple um, design. We are inline only um, for this event. And that just makes it simple. Back here, I'm using the JKD3 bracket. We'll have the link there in the rules. You can use any bracket you want, or you can make your own. Uh, it just simplifies the build for me. As far as the, the guide is concerned, this one here has a slotting plus. The deep wood guide, you can see that I trimmed it, and it works just fine out here. If you're more comfortable with the commercial type guides, then by all means, you can use those too. Our slot is deep enough, it'll accommodate either or. As far as the motor is concerned, we are concentrating on using the JAWS motor. We know availability is a little tight on those, so we're allowing the NSR Baby King as well, because they're very equal. And then later, here probably in about a month or so, we're going to have the new Predator Long Can, which is the replacement for the JAWS. So you can get started building. You'll have plenty of time to pick up uh, the newer motors when they come out. And just a quick reminder, I didn't put it in the other video there, but in this series, we are going to allow the H&R brass chassis and even the old original ProTrack brass chassis, the H&R took over from the ProTrack in brass when they went to the printed circuit board stuff. So either of those two chassis are authorized and that's the only other two that we're going to allow and the reason that we're doing that is I know that some people are not comfortable yet with scratch building and that might keep you out of the game and I don't want that so just like here with Brian we did it using the H&R there's no performance advantage either way in some cases depending on chassis design it could be a disadvantage but um, this one's right in the game real close to lap times from uh, scratch built chassis. So again, the H&R or the older Pro Track are the only other two chassis allowed. And again, you know, no plastic, no 3D hybrids, brass and steel only. Okay, it's time to talk about wheels and tires. If you read the rules, you'll find out that we're going to use the narrow or wheels, not to exceed 12 and a half millimeter in width, front and rear. So they match just like the one-to-one -one cars did. So you can't use the super wide steamrollers here. You have to use the narrower wheel. And on the rear, it's Paul Gates tires only. There's two different sizes that are approved for you to use. One is 28125 or 28120. And the other one is 26125 or 26120. And we'll get to that right now. As far as the wheels are concerned, I can highly suggest using the CB Design Steely Wheels. Again, you can use 332nd or 184, does not matter. But uh, I like these ribbed wheels because the tires that come on it, the 26 or the 28 that you order for them, they slip right on. You can glue them if you want to, but they're a very good fit, easy to true. And I mean, it's just um, a really good setup. So now I will, um, allow the uh, smooth bore wheels if you have them already um, you're going to have to get what's called a zero tire so for example these are 28120 that last number is the uh, the rib width and since it doesn't have a rib it's a zero again all the part numbers are in the rules so that you will definitely have to glue on i'm also going to allow the uh, old pro track or h and r front wheels as you can see here again these are not the uh, the wider wheels you can use these as well but you have to have an insert now this is where i talked about 125th and 124th you buy a 125th kit um, the inserts will probably drop in and fit just perfectly in 124th sometimes they're a little bit big and you have a lot of sanding to do so going 125th can help you and the final wheel which I used here with Brian, and he used them on his cars, the new insert wheels from Slotcar Corner, the new CB Design insert wheels, and those are the inserts from the kit, and they worked. 
they work just fine. So you can use those wheels as well. But remember that on the rear, you can only use Paul Gates tires. On the front, if you want to use foams, the old foams that you have, some of the wheels and you just want to put inserts in there, that's fine. But again, we have a diameter uh, restriction. You can't uh, grind these down to nothing and make them look like O-rings or LMPs. Um, scale is important here. This is about modeling as much as it is performance. And the cars didn't look like that. So um, you're going to have to keep that in mind. So if you've got some old foams, but if they're ground down to nothing, then it's probably time to change those. And just a quick word on gearing. Um, had a few questions on our track here. 9 to 27, 9 to 28. That's the usual sweet spot. Just like the 132 cars, same ratio. Um, you can gear it any way you want, though. Uh, I can tell you that. I'm just trying to give you my best advice as far as you know the ratio to choose. Now, as far as the gears go, I have to tell you, I've been using these newer gears from Mid America Raceway on Slocker Corner. They have them in stock. Decent price, and they're really good. I've been testing them for quite a few months now, and uh, they work great for the, this kind of scratch building. You know, you don't need a boss here to keep your side-to-side -side free play or anything centered because it's already done that. You've already built that in. So um, I like it without the boss, and uh, it's got a good mesh here with the slotted pinion. As a matter of fact, I've been using them um, on the 132 Showdown cars. Got one right in there. Nice and smooth. So just a suggestion, and the reason that I'm bringing it up is that there has been an issue with uh, slotted availability on crowns and, and things like that. So as far as uh, scratch building is concerned, you know, if you don't need the boss here, um, I really suggest uh, taking a look at these. I mean, they are a larger diameter, you know, than uh, your standard uh, 132nd scale gears. But um, in this application, they work pretty good. So, eh, just a suggestion. You can use any gear you want. Okay, now we'll talk about the track clearance real quick. I'm going to give a 332nd um, is the minimum. It can't go any lower than this. I just use an axle. It was just easy for me to show you this way. And the reason for that is just about any lower than this, and you risk dragging my track. And I got to tell you, fellas, I just don't like that, okay? I don't like it when chassis and bodies drag my track and cut into them. It's kind of annoying. I think you get my drift. And that goes back to why I gave the 25 millimeter limit here on these tires on the on the diameter to not go any lower than 25 because you risk dropping this chassis down like this H&R for example in a pro track and then the next thing you know you're dragging the track and then I'll have to send you a PM and say guess what I'm not going to race your car and we don't want that so just keep the 332nd limit in mind and that means for the body too. Well, that just about covers it all. In between that and the printed rules should tell you everything you need to know. If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Get on the forum. We have a forum dedicated to this series. Get on there and ask some questions. But I have to just say, uh, I really look forward to this. I look forward to the veterans of the Showdown series to, to, to step it up to scale and to join in this fun. I think you guys are going to have a blast. And I'd really like to see some newcomers too. I mean, this hard body slot car racing has been around for, well, a long, long time. And uh, we've been doing it many years. And this is the first time we're really going to do a proxy. And I'm pretty excited about it. This is a, a little narrow time frame, just a little slice of NASCAR history with these big, ridiculous cars. But we have had nothing but fun racing them. So I look forward to uh, seeing some newcomers and the veterans, and like I said, any questions, you guys give me a shout.